So really in uh, SQL Server or any really database platform like Oracle or MySQL, tables are, and as you can see, my English isn't the best and my typing is even worse, but tables are the building blocks and storage of data in SQL Server. A relational database has several tables each catering to a particular subject or entity. So this is a typical uh, database. So for example, you may have a, <clears throat> like I mentioned, the sales database and you may have a customer table. Within the, that table, we should have everything related to the customer. So things like a customer ID, their name, uh, their address, uh, maybe, you know, what kind of uh, division do they have, things of that nature, okay? And like I mentioned earlier, uh, a table is really made up of uh, two things, okay? You have uh, the fields, uh, you know, so these contain particular information on a, on a specific item. So an example I have in here is social security number, right? You go to a doctor's office, um, first thing they would like to know is, you know, what is your social security number? Or you may have a customer database and you may be looking at a customer ID column, right? Now, related to this is the next item, which is the records and the rows. These really are a complete instance of one item, okay? So you may be looking at a particular record for a specific customer, or if you are, like I said, a hospital, you may be looking at a particular patient record, okay? So as far as uh, creating tables in SQL Server 2012, just like a database, you have multiple methods of doing this, okay? You have the SSMS, uh, you have uh, Transact SQL, and then you have the template browser, right? We are basically going to create the following two tables. We are going to create a teacher's table. Uh, we will be using SSMS to do that, and then we are going to create a student's table using SQL command. So let's keep uh, plugging along. Now before we do anything I would like to discuss a few uh, more items that I, you know I think are important. So as far as when you when you're trying to name a field again it should really be intuitive and describe the info. Uh, you know if you if you have a student table you know call it students don't call it like S286 or uh, ABC. I mean, you, you really want to keep it in line uh, with the information that it is containing. Now, as far as uh, within, the, within the table, you have the fields or the columns, like I mentioned, and these fields have a data type, which really, this is what I'm talking about here, it really defines what type of data can be stored within that field. So if you have a daytime field, Sure, you can create, uh, you can store things like birthdays in it or, you know, employee start date, employee end date, okay? Uh, keeping in line, if you have a um, integer field, okay, which is INT is what it stands for, you know, it can contain numeric information, okay? So, um, you know, it is important to choose the data type that is appropriate, if you are uh, trying to store um, numbers, you know, don't use a varchar, which is the text field in SQL. Use an integer. If it's going to have uh, decimal uh, type information, I mean, use a float or a real, okay? Um, also, another thing is a field size is really important, okay? If, if your field, maybe let's just use state as an example, okay? So... You know, if you're using to store something like AZ or TX, which is where I live, you know, you don't need to make the field Warchar 20. I mean, it doesn't make any sense because all you're doing is you're storing two characters in it. And, uh, and this thing really becomes an important item, you know, uh, like I mentioned, as your database grows bigger and bigger for the performance and scalability, uh, you know, things like the field size does add up over time, okay? Um, next point is a primary key or a PK. Basically, in a table, 
you know, is what uniquely identifies a record, okay? And I've already mentioned this, uh, social security, uh, you know, can be a primary key identifier for just about anything, uh, employee table, uh, you know, patient table, student table. Now related to primary key or PK, there's another thing called a foreign key or FK, okay? And this is really a field in the child or the secondary table that maps to the primary key in a parent or primary table okay we will talk about this in later training videos in fact I will have a session just on this and then finally we have constraints uh, on fields these are necessary for data validation okay so if you have a social security number field you can only store numeric you cannot put things like a b c d e f within that field so then we are going to basically look at how to create a table within sql server 2012 again we are going to use uh, the college database um, actually i got this wrong i have to use uh, school database i apologize for that um, we are going to create uh, the first table which is going to be teachers using SQL Server Management Studio. Next we will enter some data and then after that we are going to use uh, Transact SQL and we will create the students table and for that one we already have a script which is students-basic.sql. We will use a SQL insert command to um, put data into students table and we have already a file for this one and then finally we will show you some of these um, commands using the template browser so let us go ahead and switch to the management studio I will go here and I think I can close this one I don't need to uh, do that anymore so as far as the school database, uh, like I had mentioned, uh, right now we don't have any tables. I will refresh, make sure that we don't have that. And as far as creating a new table in uh, Management Studio, you, you can simply right click on the table and select new table. Okay. This pretty much, if you're used with, if you have used Microsoft Access, this should look very similar and I am going to basically start typing away um, for today I'm using upper upper caps basically it doesn't uh, really matter uh, SQL Server for the most part is uh, case insensitive okay now like I had mentioned that uh, when you're naming the field or the column name you need to be intuitive okay so the first field typically in a table is a primary key since this is a teachers table I am going to call the first field teacher underscore or under bar teacher ID okay this is going to be our unique identifier now remember the data type for us uh, for now I'm going to create a varchar which basically stands for variable character and the data size that I had mentioned for now we will just go with eight okay now this last item where it says allow nulls uh, we will want to uncheck this what that means is that this field has to be populated okay you cannot leave it blank uh, you may have a situation where you have a field uh, let's say you know middle initial I do not have one since my parents didn't uh, uh, pay attention coming up with one so if, if uh, my information is sitting in a table with a middle initial that would be blank or basically null which actually means it's uh, missing information or uh, you know not identified okay anyway moving on I'm going to enter um, let me go ahead and enter a couple of fields just to kind of show you how this is done and then I'm actually probably going to pause the video or the session and then uh, we will continue but basically so the next field is last name uh, varchar 30 which is okay uh, and then uh, you know we can go ahead and allow null for that one in a similar fashion we can do first name again uh, what you can also do is you can copy paste 
this by the way uh, you know if if the field happens to be the same um, let's do another one called gender code okay and for this one we'll go either male or female so this should be varchar really one because all that's all you're storing in there and I'm going to go ahead and type some of this information. I will pause the training video and we will be right back when I'm about done with it. I am about done uh, with this table. I have the last field, which is the email in here. I'm going to pick Warchar 50. So <clears throat> let, me, uh, let me go through this and then I'm going to actually point a couple of things that I wanted to bring up. But uh, so let's look at the fields. We have the teacher ID, which remember is going to be um, not null, basically, which means it is required. Everything else except for the active flag down here is uh, optional. We have the last name, first name, gender code, birth date, which you'll notice I used a date time for this, social security number, uh, which is a war, war car or war char nine, race code, active, active flag we are requiring which means you have to make sure that either the uh, the teacher in question is active or inactive and uh, we're using an integer so we could use something like zero for inactive and one for active we have a department id which is going to be a foreign key to the department table but we'll talk about that in a separate video it's also an integer we have an address one address two field city state zip code phone one phone two and email okay now i have not saved this table yet i haven't even named it but before i do that uh, let me point a couple of things to you um, you could also when you're changing information in a table you have this uh, pane i guess called column properties on the bottom and you can uh, modify certain things in here so for example for the active flag, we would like to have a default value, <clears throat> excuse me, of one in here, which means that if we somehow miss this um, when we're trying to insert information, it will just give it a value of one, okay? Another thing we can do is we will talk about uh, constraints in detail, but let's say that, uh, you know, we are in here and um, uh, we don't really have any department uh, ID which is greater than uh, 8 okay I could come in here and basically uh, let's see where I could uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think where we add um, you could right click here and select check constraints okay and then now we are going to add a new one okay so basically constraint is what is going to limit uh, the type of information that can go in the field okay so we're going to click add okay you could call it a different name uh, which in fact is recommended so let me call this a this is going to be a teachers table so typically you want to name um, put in the name of the table and then the field which is going to be uh, department underscore ID okay so that's the name of the constraint you could add a description if you wanted to and the expression is where you're going to say something like uh, department id needs to be less than nine okay uh, so the way you read that is uh, make sure that the department id is less than nine we hit okay um, we gave it a name we gave it an expression i'm going to go ahead and click close okay so we just uh, created that constraint okay uh, and at this point I believe our table is ready to go I think it looks pretty good uh, you could click save here or you can when you close this it'll ask you but let's go ahead and click save I'm going to call this uh, teachers okay and let me close this one now if I refresh this see that we do have a teachers table right there now you could modify this table if you wanted to you uh, simply right click select design and it kind of brings you back into the same sort of window you can uh, change things in here in fact um, one of the things I want to change is the zip code I noticed that uh, 
I'm using Watcher 5, which I'm going to change this to, <coughs> uh, let's make it 10. Um, because sometimes zip codes can be a little bit longer than, than 5, so uh, everything else looks good. When you close it, it'll ask you, do you want to go ahead and save it? I will say yes. Okay. Now, again, if I go back to design, um, and if I go to zip code, you'll notice that it's bar chart 10. So that looks good. Now, how do you enter data into this? You could right click on a table and select edit. Okay, and there's other things you can do that in here too, but let's just do edit and let us go ahead and minimize this part so we can see our fields. And at this point, uh, you know, let's go ahead and start typing in. Um, now the information, uh, I will try to keep them lowercase unless it's a first name, but uh, the ID needs to be unique. So let's call it teach01. I can go as a teacher okay and as you'll notice as I'm entering information you're getting these um, exclamation marks what that means is that this one is not uh, committed yet social security let me just make something up here uh, <coughs> 987 in fact what I need to do is I think I need to take the dashes out so let me inform, add this information, and then I will be right back. So I'm back. You'll notice that um, I'm going to go ahead and actually leave some of these other fields towards the end empty. Um, other than that, I entered uh, fairly everything. Uh, a couple things um, I'll like to mention. I have a department of seven in here, and here notice that I did not enter anything. Now when we commit this, we should be able to uh, get a one in here, okay? And you'll notice on the left side we have a pencil which means we're editing now in order to commit you can actually click on this one or you can click the next record and that should also commit it okay uh, just to be make sure we'll just uh, execute this and that's it now you'll notice that my record is committed and here you go this is what I was trying to mention that it already added the active flag of value one okay so now if I, I can close it, if I go back to uh, Explorer, besides opening that, editing, you can also do a select top 1000, okay? And right now, there's only one record in here, okay? So that's another way to look at the data. Yet another way you can do this is right click, script table as, and then go select two. Okay, you can even save it to a file, clipboard, well, let's just go to new query pretty much gives you the select statement you can run it and execute it and it's done so let's close this one close this one I'm going to <clears throat> show you one more thing and then we'll switch to the t-sql one thing I want to try is I'm going to put a department ID of 10 okay and see if I can get a nice little error from SQL server so 10 is definitely higher than nine when I try to go to another cell notice what it says it says the data was not committed constraint CK teachers department ID you guys remember that one 